Real Talk Live with Rodney Grimes. People to people, power to power, positive thinking people. Yes, with Sir Rod and Lady Z. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about we. And God we trust. Good evening, good evening. How you doing? This is People to People. People to People with Rodney Grimes. You know how we do. We make things happen. Uh, I want y'all to work with me today because um, my emotions are all over the place for several reasons. And that's based on the fact that uh, it's Black History Month. And Black History Month is very, very important. You know what we call it? Let's Talk About It Wednesday. Well, what I did, uh, I brought a gentleman in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I brought a gentleman in, and I have another gentleman getting ready to join us shortly uh, to talk about black history truth. So, with that said, I want to introduce Mr. Harold Hughes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So, how you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me. I am. It's such a pleasure. You know, you you're not like a visitor to the, <laughs> to the People to People podcast. Uh, you know, I really really appreciate. You know, actually, every time that I invite you, you accept the invitation. So that's a real good thing. Not a problem. Thank you. So uh, basically, um, what I wanted to do is talk about just the truth of history. I'm talking the truth that we have. Okay. You know, and. Uh, you know, um, one of the things I'm sure that you probably had to deal with, you don't mind telling the year you was born, do you? No, I was born May the 3rd, 1952. 1952. Yes. What was it like in, in, in say, 57, 58? Segregated. Remember, in, uh, an integration in City of Alexandria didn't come to 1965. Okay. So uh, back then we were colored. You know, we we hadn't made our minds up exactly what we wanted to be. We went from Negroes to colored, uh, to blacks, to African Americans. You know, depending upon what year you were born or what century you were born, your your birth certificate might read one of those particular denominations. Mine just happened to read colored. Okay, and uh, and as far as black history goes, it was a week. It was Black History Week, not Black History Month. And uh, what that consisted of was just knowing that we had a week in the month of February. Uh, oh, man. Uh, nobody, actually, nobody actually taught it, per se. Uh, uh, all we heard about were certain, you know, certain inventors. You, you know, there were no politicians. There were no teachers. There was no educators. There was no... No, anything. All we heard about Eli Whitney and the cotton gin, so forth and so on. You know, that's as far as they want us to know about things. You know, uh, so I, I guess that would prevent people like myself back during the days never knowing. I went to Charles Houston, never even knew who Charles Houston was. I, you know what I mean? Until I became an adult, and then I had to research it myself. You know, you have to go back and look at the schools you went to. What, who was Charles Houston? What well, Charles Houston just happened to be 
the lawyer who taught Thurgood Marshall. Right. Okay. Didn't know that during school. You know, I thought it was just name of a school. I didn't think that it had any history whatsoever attached to it. So, you know, so black history was was just a name given to the Negroes at that time. You have to go back and uh, let's be uh, politically correct uh, at that particular time, you, you, you know. So that was, the, that was the extent of black history. You know, you know. Right, that's something I remember, remember <laughs> calling Negroes. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, my, my other guest, uh, Mr. William Pinky Slade, just came in. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, we, we, we doing still, y- y'all see a little adjustments going on, pay no, no, no attention. We keep doing what we're doing, making it happen. But uh, uh, it's Black History Month here with uh, us here at the People to People studio. And this, I, I, the, the topic today is black history truth. Uh, we talking about the truth of what's really going on. And so I'm excited about, you know, us uh, really uh, speaking on things that are, are really true. Um, I, I think y'all got us blacked out or something somewhere. It's, it's everything going on right now. But y'all, yeah, y'all work with me. Okay, so, uh, so uh, Slate, how you doing, bro? I'm good, brother. And uh, you, uh, I just, I, I just asked her, uh, mm-hmm. uh, when was it? Uh, what year was he born? What year were you born? I was born in 1955. Okay, same so, era. Same era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that up too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, mm-hmm. What was it like in, when, I want to say, so if you was in 55, say in 60. Come on, let's talk. Oh, the 60s? Yeah. And, and, it's, and I was born in 1960, so y'all a little older than me. <laughs> <laughs> y'all was out of Pampers. Yeah. Oh, 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 and we didn't have Pampers back then. We had diapers. Yeah, had diapers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They delivered the milk. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. But so. It was great. I mean, you know, coming up during that era, I just remember... Um, from that time, you know, um, 65, 55, 65, I'm 10 years old, and, you know, as it went on, I got into my, being a teenager. We had a great time, you know, um, coming up in Alexandria. Um, and, you know, we had, that's when you had neighborhood. Point. You had a neighborhood. Right. Everybody knew your parents, you know, and um, you knew everybody lived in the neighborhood. I kind of, I grew up on Axme on the 200 block of Patrick Street. Huh. By Dr. Carbon's office, so I lived right next door to Dr. Carbon's office. And me and um, at that time, BB Rossman was living where I was living at Curly Red, Curly Robson. We call him Curly Red. So um, we kind of grew up there, and um, down the alley, down the alley was like Wimbo and him, and you know, and um, around the, off of Queen Street. So I, you know, I grew right by Queen Street. So mm-hmm. um, back in that days, you know. Queen Street was the Action Street. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You had to lean into the mic a little bit. Okay. You you, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't allowed to go down there. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, 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 I couldn't uh, do do this. We're gonna make some adjustments right now. So, oh, okay. Okay. so what, what you need to, what you want them to do, real quick. In the middle. Yeah, because okay. I mean, the middle. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I believe in sharing. Okay. That's All right. Good. Okay. So, so um, um, basically. As you said, Queen Street. Mm-hmm. You remember Queen Street was uh, uh, <laughs> that, that well, was that well, was the strip. I got what we call it the strip. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's where the gambling houses were. You know, the, um, the skin joints and the skin joints. Um, but mostly, you know, like it were business there. It was always businesses there. Let, let, let me let me let me help you out. Listen, mm-hmm. see, we're talking about 1960, right? Mm-hmm. And we and we are talking about segregated. Alexandria, Alexandria. Right. not integrated Alexandria exactly. because that we down you're talking about the 70s. Right, right. So right. You know, when you when you talk about the 60s, mm-hmm. you you're talking about Ale- the black Alexandria because that's most people don't know yes. about the railroad tracks. The, right. the railroad, railroad tracks, tracks are there to separate blacks, blacks from, from the whites. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we and in, in, in the fifth that's my phone. In the fifties and the sixties, mm-hmm. you're talking about blacks dealing with blacks. Mm-hmm. Black school teachers, yeah, 
black churches, exactly. black ministers. Mm -hmm. And you are also talking about black businesses. Now, yes. in, the, in the 50s and the 60s, you're talking about black people buying from black people. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that's segregation. Mm -hmm. It had its benefits. Sure. We took care of our own. Mm -hmm. That was before big government got involved. Mm -hmm. Big government got involved during integration. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good thing. You know what I mean? Because integration effectively broke up the black household. Now, I wanted to say, because something uh -huh. that you said earlier, mm -hmm. you said when we were talking on the phone, mm -hmm. we were better off then than we are right now. Well, the reason I said that, because, like, um, for example, you said Queen Street, but I remember a lot of people on Queen Street owned their homes Correct. and their business. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Harris, he owned the barbershop. Mm -hmm. That was long before a lot of barbers was even down there. And even um, as others came, they started ownership. So it was a lot of ownership during that time frame of people owning things. So the relationship was a lot better in terms Miss Blues had the drugstore. Yes. Right. That was yes. her property. Yes. You see, yes. she owned that. Right. See, so... Yeah, a big difference. Right, so sure. when at that time when, when they died off, they was leaving something, <laughs> they left it to an um, individual who was able to keep it. See, you know, we didn't start really losing anything to later on, like, as you got up way up in the 70s when the drug thing came through. Because a lot of times, back then, people literally owned stuff. So um, living in Alexandria, like I say, they were owning things... Um, we had, um, as he mentioned, you know, we, we stayed on our side. I mean, I, I worked, I used to go with my, with my father's cousin, Herman, because um, um, one of the, two of the biggest family was, um, one of the families is Shapiro's. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shapiro, Jewish family, they own uh, a lot of stuff was on King Street, and I remember my cousin was working at the pawn shop. <laughs> so I wound up going to the pawn shop, help, you know, I'm a little guy. I forgot it was a pawn shop on sure, King Street. absolutely. That's at Shapiro's. Yeah, that was Shapiro's <laughs> pawn shop. And um, I was working in there as a kid, you know, cleaning up and stuff, helping my, my father's cousin out. I should say Cousin Herman was his name. But that's where I learned to, from uh, how to play a lot of different instruments because I could mess with all the instruments. I was a kid. You know, and they love me. So even and if I fast forward, when I started going to Northern Virginia Community College, and I was up there for a while at the college, and one day I was going through my his my U.S. history book and my business my business book. I think it was in the business book. I was taking business administration, and when I opened the book up, I saw the Shapiro family in the book. That literally mm -hmm. blew my mind. I said, "What am I doing here when I know these people?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember going back to Mr. Shapiro. And said, Mr. Because he owned the Chevrolet building that was on that corner. That's correct. I wrote Chevrolet. He owned so, that so, building. So I wind up opening up an art shop in that building. I asked him, could I start an art shop? So I really had the first black art shop on King Street. So wait a minute. I want to go back and, and, mm -hmm. and just check on something. So looking at where we were at right now, we're talking about back in the in the uh Early '60s, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Segregation. Segregation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got to keep it real. You keep it real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, me, I was born in 1960. I remember Martin Luther King was killed in 1968. So you were right. eight years old. I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I I remember going to an all black school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I remember being chased by an older white guy, he spit at me and called me the N word, mm -hmm. and told the two little white kids to get me. And 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 I had crossed over King Street. You was down by you were down by Murphy somewhere at J C Penney. No no no. I actually I was going over there by A M P. Remember A M P was up on the yeah A M P yeah A M P A M P yeah yeah. And uh, that was the the black way to say it A M P. Yeah we know we know <laughs> A M P. Yeah for for the, for the but, ones who don't uh, know. No no you're right correction. You, you know. Uh, but, but that was the, the the thing was this was just uh, was so funny. Mm -hmm. While they was chasing me, I knew all I had to do was get over by the Reed Theater. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Queen, it was cross over back over to Queen, by, off, off the other side of King, actually. It, get on the other side of King Street. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and there was a safe zone. Yes. Right. Well, prior to then, see, back in that time, we was going to the King Palace. Right there on Queen Street. Correct. That was our theater. Where that's the where is. that's where the church is. Right. That was right. King Palace. 
and we played basketball right across on that court. But we the, the movie for us was King Palace. That was the name of it. And then we didn't go to Reed Theater. See, Reed Theater was like, in other words, when you dealt with King Street, right, um, King Street was not where we were hanging out at. I mean, eventually, like it got in the 70s, you had, um, like I said, you had Kent's Men's Store there on one end um, where um, Alan Holmes was working at Kent's Men's Store. <laughs> we were buying... That's the name I ain't heard in years. Yeah, we was, we, he was one of my martial arts teachers. Yeah, so yeah he was my martial arts yeah. teacher yeah. instructor, so, so, too. Um, you know, we would go there and buy slacks and everything, and then um, I can't think of the brother's name that used to live on Queen Street. They were working at the other men's store. Kent's? The other one down by J.C. Penney's. A uh, Murphy's. Remember yeah, where Murphy's yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was another men's store. K and B. K and B. That's that's the that were not the belts. The, the belts. Belt. Exactly. Mr. Belts was in there. Yeah, the belts were in there. You yeah. remember? I'm just speaking. That's one man. Yeah. I never saw dirty. Mm -hmm. No, no. Ever absolutely. in my and life. Absolutely. Another man too. Um, you could. I, I would give that um, claim to was. Um, Mr. What is his name? Oh God, I had it when I was coming here. But he owned. He was part of owning the cab company. Mr. I, that, that would be Mr. Mr. Uh, um, um, he was. Uh, I just because uh, his son was. Remember his. Uh, uh, his son was killed in Seven Eleven. Yeah, yeah, oh, you're about talking about the Robbers. Yeah, Mr. Gibson. 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 Rob. Rob. His Robin. Name, right. Rob was Robin his son. Robin Gibson, Gibson was the one yeah. that was killed. killed. Yeah. Wayne yes. Robinson. Right. All yeah. That, all the rest see, of them. So yeah. Mr. Gibb. Mr. Gibb was clean every day. Yes. yes. You remember know, that so black and white top hat like you got on your head? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those. See, we. You had gentlemen. See, so that's what made you want to dress well and look well because you had a lot of gentlemen in the community, you know? Even if they saw you as a young person, they saw you on Queen Street, they would say, what are you doing out here? Yeah, exactly. Because I used to, my mom, this is a true story. My father was a gambler. So my father used to go to the gambling houses on the weekend, you know, he would put on his, his nice clean suit, you know, and everything. And he, he, he carried a long, long nose 38 always with him. So he would go to the gambling house, he would gamble. And I remember my mom used to tell me at a certain time, my father, my mom would say, go around there and get your daddy. I mean, I'm that little boy. So I remember going through the alley right by the um, the um, the club. You know what I'm talking about, the Elks Home. The Elks Home. So the alley was back <laughs> behind the Elks Home. So I'm going through that alley. And I would go knock on that door. Boom, 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 boom. And I would open a little slot and say, what do you want? Just like in the movie. <laughs> this is a true story. Well, he so, runs the Elks. You know yeah, that, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I would go and I would go and say, um, I come to get my daddy. I'll give my father now. I say, I'm Pee Wee's son, because that was my dad's name, Pee Wee. So they say, Pee Wee, your boy out here. I, and my father would come to the door. He said, What, what you doing here? I said, Mama, say, come on. So you know, he said, All right. So they say, Where you going? He said, I gotta go. My son come get me. So I would go get my dad sometimes. So, so basically, mm -hmm. when we, I mean, all of these things here is back in the city mm -hmm. where it was, it was literally black controlled to a certain point, right? Well, no, it, it was, absolutely not. It was not black controlled. But it, was it was white controlled. But black. But you, were, but okay, let me, let me, let me be politically correct. <laughs> the railroad track made a difference. Mm -hmm. Believe me, the railroad track that separated. Black Alexandria from White Alexandria. Mm -hmm. King Street separated poor Alexandria from rich Alexandria. King Street was a separate line from the north or the south. One side right, of King Street right. was south. One All the stores, if, if you look at Alexandria, even today, all the, all the stores, the, 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 the big box King stores are on King Street, on the south side, headed towards the south. Start, if you start on the 100 block right. on King Street, right, big box, all of them on that side of the street. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you cross back over to, to where it is the 100 block of Patrick and and the 100 and Henry, mm -hmm. ain't nothing there. Mm -hmm. Nothing there. But there were houses there that were owned by blacks. Mm -hmm. Now you got now you. Well, this is what you must remember. Segregation allowed blacks to live there. They own, we own their, they own their houses. Believe me, they mm -hmm. own their houses. They, nobody wanted for anything. Mm -hmm. Segregation came in. The grandparents 
who was who would have been in their eighties and nineties started dying off. Mm -hmm. Those homes reverted to parents mm -hmm. who are now in their fifties and their sixties. Mm -hmm. I want you to follow this this, this generation. Mm -hmm. Now, they started dying off. Now you got our generation. Now we would have been in and out. Al, uh, uh, in 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 the seventy, when young twenties or mm -hmm. early thirties or something mm -hmm. like that, we we are that generation who started this disaster. Where uh, where as our parents beat us and we didn't know why, mm -hmm. because if it's five boys and you know it's hard to raise five hard headed boys, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Plus, if they stab steps, yeah, mm -hmm. you got you have to teach them what to do right. You have to teach them respect. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't acknowledge that, so we 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 said we're gonna stop all this. We're gonna treat our kids better. Mm -hmm. What comes with being better? Spoiling. You you spoil them, and then what happens after that? No respect. respect. Right. Okay. We, we 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 start to lose that grip. That right. correct. We correct. Mm -hmm. And see now, mm -hmm. along with integration, I mean, because people my age that slaves age, even your age. You you knew where the police department was. It used to be right in the, the projects, projects in the bird. bird. Yeah. Right there. It was it, it was there exactly. for a reason. Everything, yeah. It was there, there for, for a reason. reason. Sure. Oh, okay. Right in the midst of us. Yeah. If you consider the bird is the is the one of the oldest project mm -hmm. public project housings in the city of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. So 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 because for the listeners, what I want them to be able to when they hear us talking about this, mm -hmm. they gotta understand that at one time Alexandra, we were kind of what I would look at. We were flourishing. Of course, you were. Yeah, well, what, see what we did. We, you, you're correct. We were flourishing, but see what we wound up doing. Because um, I heard he said segregation and so forth. What we wound up doing is something S. B. Fuller said. He said we gave up economical freedom sure. for social freedom. See when they did, when they segregated the schools where you can go here and go there. Um, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it was, it was, and once again, economical freedom versus social freedom. It's called yeah. imploding. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, let, and, 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 no, and, and I want y'all to hear something because he just made a point that no, not many people realize. Along with the zoning of the schools mm -hmm. came zoning of the people. Yeah. What I'm saying where there were large blocks of blacks living together, mm -hmm. they broke it up. Now, you have to remember, South Side and the North Side and the Bird, at one time, uh, all the, all, all, all them went to all black schools and was going, was going yeah, to go to, to Parker Park Gray. Gray. Yeah, because I went to Now, right. now yes. here comes zoning. Yeah. Be, and we're talking about prior K6221. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are talking about the Francis C. Hammond, T.C. Williams, and George Washington. Mm -hmm. And then you had Jefferson down there on West Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. O okay, close Jefferson down. Right. Okay, now I'm going to give you the history of it. Close Jefferson down. Mm -hmm. You know, Mount Vernon used to be a high school also. Yes. On Mount Vernon Avenue. Mm -hmm. It be used to be a high school? Before, before GW. You, mm -hmm. It was in high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the, the inner blacks start moving to the suburbs, to Delray. So they they sold their parents' houses mm -hmm. dirt cheap, twenty five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. You could buy a house back then for six thousand. People, <laughs> white people, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like it is. I don't blame them. I bought these houses. When they bought these houses, they they invested in them. Mm -hmm. Now that twenty thousand dollar house now costs about a hundred thousand dollar home. Yeah. So now they're moving to the suburbs to get the houses that you got in the suburbs. So then you got to move back to the city, mm -hmm. but you can't afford to live in the city no more because you mm -hmm. don't mess around and sold that house. Mm -hmm. Now, now, okay, <laughs> hold on, because this See, is. Well, we get we have gotten way off of right. way off of, of, of black history. Now let no, me. No, you're still on the history. <laughs> you're still on the history, but we gotta we gotta make sure that people are following us where we need to go. Okay. This is part of the things that we gotta talk about uh, having um, financial wealth. Mm -hmm. within our families and start creating it. Mm -hmm. Because if we had it did it then, we would have been in more control. Mm -hmm. I, I see, I saw you, you, you reached out. Did you have mm -hmm. some? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Okay, so basically where we are, mm -hmm. basically, you know, it was by design to disrupt everything. Yeah, well, if you ever go down, I, no, no, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that. I, I, mm -hmm. I, as I said, we imploded ourselves. So we did it to ourselves. Of course. Well, uh, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Well, let me say this. Um, I had the great fortune of working down City Hall. I used to work in the purchasing department at City Hall, right, as a young man, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I never forgotten this. So I'm a teenager. I'm learning, you know, learning the trade of um, um, purchasing, and I work in the purchasing office where you would order things for the fire department, police department, whatever department. For people who don't know, city. shipping and receiving. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's it. That's yeah, I, I know. So <laughs> I was working in there, and I remember this, this sister came in one day. This lady came in, and she was talking to um, Jim Compton, was the head guy then, and she asked him a question, and Robert Fitzgerald was the... Um, was the buyer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm working with these two gentlemen, and um, she, she came in his office one day, so I am happened to be, you know, sitting where I could hear the conversation. And she said, um, and she came there because contractors would come in and get the contracts. So she came in and, and, you know, wanted to purchase a contract from the city so she can do some work. They say, well, do you have the equipment, you know? And she said, no, I don't have equipment. So they say, well, therefore, you cannot get a contract with the city. She said, well, let me ask you a question. And this is what she hit him with. She said, a lot of other people don't have the equipment, but what they do, they contract the equipment to get the work done. And he couldn't say nothing else. He could just look at it. And I was looking, I peeked around in the room like this, going like to my face saying, yeah, what, what's your, you know, what kind of answer are you going to get out of them? So that was like the beginning, really, of um, black folks being able to come into the city and get contracts, because she's kind of she opened up that door for that, mm -hmm. because a lot of times we weren't even getting the contracts to do the work. So, 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 so mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let me throw one more thing in before. Go you ahead. Stay. Go ahead. Go ahead. When you think of the city, you always got to remember there's a ten year plan, <laughs> there's a twenty year plan, and what happened when they put those plans together, even today. If what we don't do, if we don't go down there and know what the 10 year, 20 year plan for our community, then what happens when they come through there and say they want to push your sidewalk back or your yard back or something? Right away. It, you know, but it's in the game plan. See, so by us not knowing this or going down okay. and seeing the plans, you don't know what's taking place in your city. Now, okay. they don't hide this from anyone. Okay, but most people don't know about it. So, so, it's so, public so, so, public record. Exactly. Yeah. So, again, mm -hmm. when we talk about history, mm -hmm. we talk about uh, social uh, uh, development and sure. understanding, mm -hmm. and all these things that plays a part in we moving forward. Right. Uh -huh. For all the young people mm -hmm. right now, and for us that's in position to teach them, mm -hmm. we kind of got to backpedal and go back to where we are teaching them how to hold on to property, to mm -hmm. go down to the meetings when they can find out about the 10-year mm -hmm. plan or the 20-year plan. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Black history mm -hmm. tells you one thing. Nothing comes easy. Nothing comes without a fight. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes without a struggle. Anything that comes to you easy is attached to something. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It is attached to something. So it, just like he said, no one goes down to City Hall during these, during these meetings. Like right now, uh, there is a plan for Route 1, mm -hmm. which is known as Patrick Street and Henry Street. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to widen it. Mm -hmm. And when they widen it, what does that mean? Some houses, get, Some houses got, got to, to go. go. That's why the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, has the right of way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of people don't know, but I'm just going to say it like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to argue with you. You can take it and you can leave it. Mm -hmm. You own the house. You don't own the land. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know? Uh -huh. But you know something else, though? <laughs> See, but what a lot of, like, for example, um, when they wide, they open up um, Cameron Street, I mean, Henry Street a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. If you notice, it's a big red house sitting on the corner of Henry and Cameron Street. It's, it's, and they built a big office building. Behind this lady. Yeah. Now, I knew that lady. That lady, believe it or not, <clears throat> who started the torpedo factory <laughs> down in, on the oh, water. What, yeah. That's her house. And she refused to move it. 
So they had to build around her house. Now they could take the land space around her house, which was her yard. She said, I don't care about that, but you, I'm not moving my, I'm not, you're not tearing down my house. See now, and another thing too, <clears throat> um, when they put a plaque on your property, see now, <coughs> mm -hmm. I know about this because that property thing is my thing. Uh -huh. You know, when they put that <clears throat> plaque on your property and it, and it says that this, this house here is considered to be A historic. Historic. Guess what? That house ain't going nowhere. You know? And if you go down, a lot of these little houses that a lot of us, our, our folks lived in on Payne Street, once you cross um, um, Cameron Street on the other side of Payne Street, all the way down to Prince Street, it's those, those properties, you got historic signs on them, or they've been zoned to be uh, commercial his, too. Yeah. Man. See, so now, see, so. That's what I'm saying. If now, what we, we the question you ask, what do we need to do to help the young people to understand? Is this young people need to understand about investing? They need to understand about investing, do, investing their money. People are scared to move money, and I'm gonna tell you why I say that. Do you know right now, between 2021, no, I'll go further back, 19 to 2022 now. Do you know how many millionaires there's been made? Oh, young, yeah, yeah. young millionaires. Yeah. And I heard this young brother say something that was so powerful. You know what he said? Mm. And he put it out there so everybody can hear. He said, first thing, you don't put anything in your name. Don't put nothing in your name. Put it in the LLC. And then he said also, once you get the LLC started, get your C-Corp. Get your C-Corp to take care of your LLC. And then he said, you can even go further than that. <clears throat> you can also get a trust to take care, the C-Corp to take care of your LLC. So if you want to have two or three different LLC, most people think you can only have one LLC. Not true. See, so what we have to do, we have to, they got, people have to slow down and get some information uh, of things that you don't know. Every time, it's, it's amazing. I can sit at home, take my Apple phone, and just stroll through it and catch little pieces of information. But see, what other people are doing, they are strolling through to see who's cute, TikTok. who's this, who's that, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but what you're really missing is the real information that hits you right in your face like that. So, and, and that information keep coming, you know? So, and I mean, now, I'm not saying you jump on everything you see on the internet and throw your money into it, because some things just, you don't, unless you put your heart and soul in, you're not gonna get the money. But um, certain things out there you can make money in. But what you got to do is just get more information about what you're trying to get your money involved into. So, so again, when, when, invest. Right. Okay. What I'm trying to, I'm, and I'm trying to keep in this area. Okay. The, the history of us as a people, mm -hmm. we don't know anything about investing. We don't know. Well, well we did back we, then. We did. I'm talking about now. Well, now, let me say, I, there I, were, I, I beg the difference with you on that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you I why I say that. Ahead. Because right now, I'm telling you, you know what? Let me say this. Even in the Bible, you know what it says? It says the young will, have, will dream dreams and have vision. The problem with us, we don't want to listen to them. They dream dreams. They have vision. So what happened, see, they, they not, their mind is not balled down with nothing. They just move on something, you know? Uh, <clears throat> they move on it. They just move on it. And guess what? That's taking a chance. But when they take a chance, now they turn up to be wealthy. Now, I don't, I don't leave out the fact that once you make money, <laughs> what do you know what, what do you to do, do with, with it? it? See, you, that's the right, difference. Right. See, it's right. not that people don't have he hit money. It, he hit it on the head. It's not that nobody don't have no money. It's what you do with the money. Like this lady said today, she said she looked at her house. I was listening to this because what I do, I, I try to listen to things that feed my brain and turn my whole old way of thinking around. And I heard the lady say, she said, one day I looked at my house. She said, why do I have 15 of this? And she said, she had to ask herself, she said, that's a sign of people not knowing that people are not having money. When you get some real money, now when you go up and you say, <clears throat> you got $3 million, $4 million sitting in your bank account or whatever you have it sitting there, Shoot. you got that <laughs> kind of money. See, now what you have, you think different. 
You spin different. See, at first, when you 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 get you, you live, turn around, right? right. You live right. Well, let me say this: if you turn around and get a, most people get a hundred thousand dollars, they're gonna take thirty percent of that and put it back in shopping. They going shopping. No matter what you say, they gonna get this. And this is what she was talking about. She said, "Why do she done so much?" She said, "Why do so, I have this, all of this?" Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you know, again, yeah, yeah. where we at, and what I'm looking at mm-hmm. is the fact that. Us as a black people in this country, mm-hmm. we need to understand where we came from, mm-hmm. have a plan to know where we're going. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to look back. Well, but we should. Oh, we have to. We have to in order for us to be able to. How are you going? How how are you going to know who you are if you don't even know where you came from? If you don't know what you stood for or what your ancestors stood you, for? You 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 would be surprised, Rodney. Uh, today, when I, when I, when I sit down and I talk mm-hmm. to people, you you give them something to read, and these are graduates of, of from the the Alexandria City Public Schools. Mm-hmm. They can't read. They they can't pronunciate words, and if they read something they don't they don't understand what they read. Mm-hmm. O- okay. And, and and as far as you, what you were saying, uh, the dream, mm-hmm. everybody wants to be LeBron James. <laughs> you must, you, you've got to understand that it's about 1,700 colleges, <coughs> mm-hmm. if not more. And out of that, only what? Only maybe 336 players mm-hmm. make the NBA or the NFL. Mm-hmm. What are your are chances? chances? Right. And you, you know what? I mean, come on, let's be realistic. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody dreams about making money, making it fast, making it today. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to earn anything. When they, when they, and this is, this is, this is the craziness that we do. Your parents leave you a house, mm-hmm. paid for. All you gotta do is pay the taxes, taxes once on. a year, yeah. mm-hmm. once a yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Come on. So what you, what do you do? You sell, sell the house. Right. Oh, you borrow again. No, no, no. no. You, you sell, sell the house, house and then you, you move, move to an apartment which you are never going to own. Mm-hmm. Now you done sold this house <laughs> and you and you got this little bit of money for this you house. <laughs> you giving it back to the people because now you got to pay rent where you live and all you had to do was pay the taxes you once a year. year. It well, it makes no sense. Because because the problem is though, mm-hmm. the problem is is the lack of the communication with the generations, <coughs> understanding the history of us as a people. What, you know, you brought up my grandfather. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, uh, you said that, my, and, and I didn't really, I mean, I, I, I was always comfortable in my grandparents' house, right? right. <coughs> but uh, mm-hmm. uh, I realized something, I said, you know what? Uh, my grandfather and my grandmother, they live comfortable. Mm-hmm. They they live very comfortable. Yeah. And so go ahead, go ahead, Christy. I know you wanted to go ahead. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Don't worry about it. No, thank you. you. When you when you speak about they live comfortable. What you need? Go they, ahead. Go ahead. They live within their means. And did, and did you see the things they acquired in their house when they pass? Where's the stuff now? Well, you know something. That's what we we didn't a lot of people. now with some of my family, we still have. Uh, uh, stuff that came from my grandparents mm-hmm. because we do the worst fighting when oh. when, when somebody passes in the family. We yeah. do, they do the worst fighting, and, and and that makes no sense. But this one, let's get to a truth about Black history. I think I heard it somewhere. It might have been it might have been taught to me that why is Black history in the month of February? I've heard everything because it, because it's the shortest month of the year. Yeah. And, and everything else, non-true, non-true. The truth about the fact why black history is in the month of February is because it coincides with the birth date of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Now, Lincoln is on the 12th. Douglass never knew when his birthday was, so they celebrated February the 14th. Hence, that is why we celebrate black history 
in the month of February. Uh, supposedly, Lincoln freed slaves, which he did, and we know this. And Doug and Frederick Douglass was an abolitionist. Okay, so that's why. But in 1926, a guy named uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Carter G. Woodson uh, used a whole week to go around and to celebrate uh, the accomplishment of black people. And that was in 1926. And that lasted 50 years. Black History Week lasted 50 years. And in 1976, um, um, I believe it was I believe, what's it, Ford, President Ford, in 1976, he extended that week to a whole month. And that was only in 1946, 1976, 76, 76 man. Which is not that long ago. No, so, so if you look at it, if you put them all together, it's only been 96 years that uh, the black has even been recognized for doing anything. Yeah. That, that, that was one of the things that also bothered me. Who do we hold responsible for that? Because let me tell you something. Me, I have a problem when we're looking for everybody to do something for us. I agree. I, I have a problem with that. Why? When, when is it that we start to really? And well, I appreciate the fact that you just taught me, and you just gave me the information mm -hmm. because. And I'm gonna be one. I don't have. I don't have no problem acknowledging mm -hmm. nothing publicly. One of the no. things coming up, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't in, in in my time coming up. It was a lot of times nobody gave you a book mm -hmm. to read. No. Mm -hmm. Why? That, Why would they? Because half of them didn't even know knowledge, how to read them. Knowledge is dangerous, right? But I'm I'm, I'm saying for our parents and mm -hmm. and be and our great our grandparents. But remember, you, you must remember this also. See now, your grandparents probably never attended no more than the fifth grade, right? In the city of Alexandria, my parents, my mother and my father. Remember, Park Ray only went to the eleventh grade. Park Gray High School Park and Parker Gray only went to 11th grade. If you wanted to graduate, <coughs> you had to go to D.C. to 12th grade. You had to leave the city of Alexandria if you wanted a 12th grade education. Man. You, you must understand that. It, it hasn't been that long. You're talking about black history has only been going on for 96 years. I'm 70. And, right. Come on, man. Right, right. I'm, I'm 61, so, be 62, so you, so you, so you must understand what part we played in it. Sure. Most people read about it. We lived it. Yeah, we lived it. You yeah. understand what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. You, you know, um, everybody knows how it was in 1926. I don't, I'm glad I wouldn't live there because I know I wouldn't be alive today no way. Well, yeah. you know what, though? Um, I've, I've known a lot of um, wealthy black people who lived in Alexandria. I mean wealthy. Sure. They, you know, but see, the thing of it is, is this. If you don't share your information about how to obtain something with young people. See, now, what we, now, what we're doing wrong that we didn't, that we used to do right, and this is what it is. Um, <clears throat> I remember working for also the, um, I used to be a martial art instructor. So I used to work, I used to teach classes in Arlington County. I used to teach classes right in Alexandria, too, for the recreation department. But when you, when you bring a kid in and you start talking to them, and, and I, I taught a lot of kids, I mean hundreds of them, hundreds of them. And the greatest thing I've seen, I've seen some young guys came back. I never forget, they came, I was living in one Woodbridge at the time. This young guy came back because he, he was dating one of these pretty girls laid down the street from me, right, you know, living in my neighborhood. And he saw me, he said, I know you. I looked at him, I said, I do remember you. He said, you taught me martial arts, you know? And he said, man, you know, he said, I never forgot the things you installed in me when you was teaching me. He said, I moved to Richmond, I got my own construction company. See, mm. so what I'm saying is Discipline. that. Discipline. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Discipline. I don't want us to think for one reason that we're not making money. It's not that we're not making money and we're not changing. Yes, we are changing. We are making money, but the key point I said before, when you look at the economic side of it, once again, what goes out of our pockets versus what comes, comes in. into our pockets, yes. instead of we saying, well, look, I have to build for my next generation. See, that's what has to be done. See, the damage that was done back there, 
and you look at now, like you say, you're looking for answers. The answers is if everybody just get on one accord and understand that you're building for not just yourself, but you're building for the future. Just like we, I talked about your grandfather. That house is still there. And we, my mom is living in it. See, I, that house is, I've been in that house many a time because, like I say, your, your cousin and I, Randy, we used to run together. Yeah. So I've been in that house many a time. I've been in his mother's house when it was in Delray. And then when she moved out on Elwood Lane out <laughs> on the Telegraph Road. So <clears throat> the thing I'm saying is that what they did, they showed us stability. Mm -hmm. See, they showed a point of stability. stability. Right, yeah. that, you, that you know, you had to be stable. And um, some family was able and some family wasn't. So, but, so, so, I'm, and I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm I be running my mind, be going. That's okay. You, Let you, it you, you said something that you that, that I want the young lady who's working the mm -hmm. board to to to, to know mm -hmm. is and when you ask who was working the board, mm -hmm. um, baby girl, can you hear me? How old are you? I'm twenty. She's twenty years old. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want I want her to understand something. Mm -hmm. We we are me us. Mm -hmm. This whole project is right. trying to instill something. Exactly. In her. Right. And she caught it. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, she's doing it. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I've seen people. Listen, let's, let's, if you open your eyes and you, and, and, and what, and you know what, what you, what you just said makes a whole lot of sense, but mm -hmm. it's a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. Because what you said, we, we must look out for the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. They did it for us. Mm -hmm. We squandered it. See? It's, now, here we go back in that same old circle. Mm -hmm. So now we looking out for the future generation. And when we put it there, what they're going to do with it? That becomes the question. Now, right. Now, okay. That's the question. Hopefully, they learn from the mistakes of others. But if yeah. you don't know, if you don't know, then you don't know. So what we have to do, mm -hmm. we got to figure out some way. And I'm going to tell you what the secret is. Okay, come on. Go ahead. Talk to me. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a father, mm -hmm. I'm a grandfather, and I'm a great-great-grandfather. Yeah. And I'm at 70. Mm -hmm. Now, remember... This what what happened to the two generations behind us, and that and they're not that far off. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up, my grandmother, my great grandmother, was in her seventies. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was in her fifties, mm -hmm. and my mama was in her thirties. So I had a lineage who taught, taught yes. history. Yes, yeah. right. You know, it taught you about the family. Mm -hmm. How can you teach anything? When the grandmama is 30 mm -hmm. and the mama is 15 and she's having babies, mm -hmm. how can a 30-year-old tell you about anything when she hasn't lived herself? <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and the, the, the black race, do you remember the, the, the Olympics? I believe it was in what sixty when was it with the with the fist, Carlos Jones them? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. We've gone from the clinch fist. To the open, open hand, hand. <laughs> we, we really have. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> that was something back in the day when we. That was like you said. We would go, and that meant black so, power. That meant well, so much yeah. when you would see somebody, well, and 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 see, it represented. This, this is why I said what I said earlier. Okay, right now, in Virginia, Alexandria places, you know, they have scatter sites now. Why do you think they did scatter sites? See, if you separate people, of course, from being together. And communicating with each other, and all of a sudden, I don't like you because you're from the bird, uh -huh. and um, I'm from the South Side. Uh -huh. I mean, I, this is this is a time I, in a I, racial I strife. Right. I can literally yes. say I went through all of that. I never forget one time where I lived on the North Side, grew up on the North Side, <laughs> but you hung. Wind up and moving on mm. the South Side, and my aunt, you know, my, I moved down there when my father got my aunt's house. So. I'm living that. All of a sudden, we had a disagreement with the north side. We all going to meet down at Billy's right down there on Alpen Street, that little shoot 'em up joint. You yeah, know, I South Alpen. Alpen. And, you know, we were supposed to be going to war. But yet, we, we, we had a truth among ourselves, you see? Yeah. And then I never forget <clears throat> when I use his first name, but I won't use his last name. When... Um, I was going, we was going to TC. The hardest time we had when we first entered TC, I never forget. Um, 
Lonnie lived up there in what you call a mud town. Mud town. They, mud everybody town. know who Lonnie is. You right. Yeah. Well, I don't, but, you know, wait, I just wait, don't wait, like wait, wait, people's names. Let name. me ask you, what's, what's mud town? Mud uh, town. Behind T.C. Williams. They, yeah, they call that mud town. Reason why. Quaker Lane. Quaker Lane. Yeah, yeah that property. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me help you out. Mm-hmm. Let, let me help you out. Alexandra had, was, 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 was Alexandria, during segregated Alexandria, mm-hmm. you, you, you had different names from different parts of Alexandria. Mm-hmm. You had Cross Canal, Mud Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I had at one time, it was eight, eight different sections of Alexandria that had eight different names. <laughs> the, uh, the north side had a, had a, had a name. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, I can't just call it off right now. Hey, that wasn't what, what, how the whole got his name, is it? Of course it is. But the hole wasn't there. We <laughs> must remember that. You, you've gone across the tracks. Yeah. That's right. You've gone across the tracks, the tracks now. now. You, you, you see, the blacks lived on one side of the tracks. Because when you go, okay, so you, you know where, where Monroe Street Bridge was. Yes. You, you know, that's, that, that was changed three times. times. Oh, okay. Yeah. B- mm-hmm. Because it used to run from Monroe Street all the all way to Route One. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And remember, Route One was one road, which used to be Patrick and Henry. Henry. They moved the projects. They put them on railroad tracks, spin them around, open up Henry Street on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's that how side, that Hobo red Junk, building yeah, got Hobo in the Hobo middle of the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of junction went down by the ice house, <laughs> up there, up there, past past Parker Gray. <laughs> Yeah, and, and remember the 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 the, the guy that drowned in the Potomac River yeah. caused the city of Alexander to build Johnson Pool. Mm-hmm. See, Alexander got some raunchy history. Yeah, yeah you, we used to you swim know? out there. Yeah, you know. And, and while I'm on this, let me let me let me tell you what I was. See, he called me today to come in here about Black History. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it was it just so happened I was on the phone and I was talking to a gentleman and and his name is um, uh, uh, Floyd Bland. Mm-hmm. Who happened to be one of the original students mm-hmm. that was in the uh, 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 Brown versus the Board of Education? Okay. You know, and, and, and this happened in Farmville, Virginia, in Prince Edward County. So, and and the strike happened on April the twenty third, mm-hmm. um, nineteen fifty one, which was about uh, thirteen days before I was born. <laughs> so. I asked them, what was the significance of Brown versus the Board of Education? Mm-hmm. And he told me that, that this 13-year-old young lady yeah. okay. had, she got them together, mm-hmm. a, group of, a group of kids, so we're talking about 13, 14, 15-year-olds, maybe 12, 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. they went on strike for equality. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this, this, this started in Farmville, Virginia. So, when I was in school, all we heard about was, kept hearing about was Brown versus the Board of Education. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, they didn't go into depth. Now, I've been, I've been an elf for 32 years. This, this gentleman is an elf, mm-hmm. you know, and he just bought it out. He just mild tempered whatsoever. He doesn't speak about his past too often. Mm-hmm. So I asked him tonight, and I said, I said, Brother Bland, not not knowing anybody because I wasn't taught any better. I, I said, uh, the young lady, her name is Barbara Johns. Uh, uh, she was 13 years old when it started, mm-hmm. and they uh, there's a statue of her in Richmond. And uh, Longwood University is going to name a building after her. And uh, so I said. Uh, who is Brown? And he said, that's a long story. Mm-hmm. I said, no, no I, mean, I mean, which one of y'all was named Brown? And he said, neither one of us was named Brown. Mm-hmm. I said, so how did Brown get involved? Was he the lawyer? And he said, no. Mm-hmm. So I became more complex. Who is Brown? And then he finally told me how it came about. Mm-hmm. So, so Brown versus the Board of Education mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope you ain't going where I think you're going. Brown is not, it's, it's, it's really not even, I, in my uh, aspect, of, it's not even a person. It's a color. It, it, it's Brown is because the Brown versus the Board of Education is more than just one school system being sued. Mm-hmm. 
So, so it actually is a class action lawsuit against the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. but, but it originated in, 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 in Prince Edwards County. Brown is a name that they came up with because they had to name it something, mm -hmm. you know. If you if you name it Farmville, then it it it, it just talks about what's happening in Farmville. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like um, uh, the all the all the blacks ask for retribution for slavery. So that becomes a, a class action lawsuit. And that's a story within itself, brothers. I know. I, I, I mean, because when you start asking for retribution uh, 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 for the whites and slavery, mm -hmm. you, you know, the Indians held slaves. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they, when the Indians did that 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 that, that, that march of death, they took along six hundred slaves with them. Mm -hmm. In the city of Alexandria, brothers, mm -hmm. blacks owned slaves. So the the question is this. If you get, if you get, rep, uh, uh, if you get rep, if you get money from the white people, do you get money from the Indians? Mm -hmm. And if you get money from the Indians, do you get the money from the blacks? Mm -hmm. That's what you're asking yourself. And if you and if you don't think it should come from one, then why should it come from the other? Mm -hmm. See, so you say catch twenty two in that situation. Sure right it there. is. So you you know you gonna have a problem. Mm -hmm. It's something I want I wanted to bring up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is on the news. So, why is it so when we really want to talk about things that's concerning us, it's a taboo? Whoopi Goldberg mm -hmm. got suspended for two weeks for talking about the Holocaust and something that she said that they said she didn't say correctly. She apologized for it, right? Mm -hmm. Well. But it, 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 it's such a taboo for us to talk about the mistreatment of us, the mistreatment of other people, the structure, the structure of where we are today, and that they want to control what we say when we want to speak the truth. Well, it, it, it's, 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 go, go ahead, go well, ahead. You use a key word. It's, it's one thing about it is this. <clears throat> um, you said something earlier, too. If I keep you with a lack of knowledge, a lack of information, you're not a threat to me. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not a threat to me whatsoever. See, so most people, because we were talking a lot, and we talk about, just imagine this. Right now, you got about this much of the old project left. I, just right here. Just enough. But you got all these high-rise, 100,000, I mean, three, four, five, seven, eight hundred thousand high-rise building built around it. And you know, some people who, who are living there, it still don't affect them. See, I wrote a, when I wrote this story in one of my books, it's called We Made It Out. And what We Made It Out was about being in the project and getting out of there, you know? Right. And the certain things you had to do, you couldn't tell nobody in your neighborhood what kind of money you made. You know, you had to keep a secret on it. You couldn't put it in the bank. See, so because everything you did towards trying to change the situation, mm -hmm. it came with a, um, a price, you know? Because when you lived in the project, you couldn't, you couldn't um, say this and that because reason why, now if they find you out of income, now they want to kick you out or they want to make you do this or pay this or pay that. See, so it was a lot of things that kept people saying, well, which way do I go? You know, how do I change my, where I'm at? How do I get out of here? Well, gentlemen, mm -hmm. you know, when we're having fun, we, we run out of time. We got, <laughs> we, got, we got less than a couple of minutes. You mm -hmm. got some comments? Go ahead and give them to me real quick. Mm -hmm. You yes. need to get your mic up to you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, Mr. John Black says, Garvey said it all. Mm -hmm. A people without knowledge of their history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, Robin Green Schofield. Please talk about the article that appeared in the Alexandria newspaper. It talked about six white ladies trying to talk about the Park Gray District. They are in real estate. It infuriates me. Well, there you go. Yeah, that, you, that, first of all, uh, I don't think many people know what the Park Gray District is. Oh, okay. It, it runs from... Um, 
the the subway right. along West Street, mm -hmm. all the way up to Washington Street. We're talking about all the way up. Mm -hmm. And then it runs all the way down to King Street, all the way back down to West Street. Mm -hmm. The big square. That, yeah. Now, back to the history of the city of Alexandria. We are talking segregation versus integration. The Parker Gray District, I'm going to remind you, in that district, there was Parker Gray High School. It had a stadium. Behind Parker Gray was Johnson Swimming Pool. Swimming pool. Mm -hmm. right. Up the street was the projects. There was the there, there was Charles Houston School. Mm -hmm. Down the street was Pendleton Street Recreation yes, Center. Yes, yeah. Okay. St. Joseph Catholic Church was dedicated to blacks. It had all black nuns there. That's how that started. Yeah. Then you then you go on then you, you you keep going all the way all the way down. Then you you run into Queen Street, mm -hmm. and then you run into <laughs> a Alexandria Large Number Forty Eight. Don't they? The only black, black fraternal black. organization in the city of Alexandria that had its own brick and mortar building. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see something. Let me see. Hello, hold on, call, hello, caller. Uh, state your name and where you calling from, real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. What's your question? My question is, I just uh, sent the question in that Mr. Hughes is talking about now, and he is absolutely correct. Uh, that's exactly what the history is. I grew up in Color Rose Mouth. Okay. Color Rose Mouth. Color so, Rose Mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, in Color Rose Mouth. And it just angers me so to have these white ladies give a snippet of the history of uh, Parker Gray uh, District. Because they're trying to sell homes there, I think that's what their uh, motive uh, to sell homes. But it makes me angry uh, to, have to see these white ladies dressed in white talk about uh, the history, just a little bit of snippet. And they don't know the history. We had our own doctors. We had our own grocery stores. Yeah. We had our own everything in Color Rose Mouth. <clears throat> yes. So, and, and we were just like around the corner from Parker Gray. Mm -hmm. So I thank Mr. Hughes for uh, giving the history of uh, the uh, Parker Gray District. These white women don't have any clue no. about how this uh, all came about. Thank you so much for your program. I'm really enjoying it. And, 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 and before you go, uh, so you actually lived in the Alexandria area? Yes, I lived on Wood Street. On, and cause, because before they built those projects, mm -hmm. there were blacks on the homes across the street from us right. before they built those new projects. I, I grew up in Color Rose Martin. In fact, I went to school with your sister Vita. <laughs> okay, talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> yes. So, yes, so, 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 can I can I invite you to come in on the show? Sure, sure. If I, my sisters can come with me, if that's all right with that's, you. That's all right with me. I, I'm a reason why is we 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 got we got a whole month of Black History, okay? Yeah. So, yes. so what I'm trying to do is we want to we want to get people talking about the truth. That's what we want to hear is the truth. We want to know who we are, where we were, how we came about. And, and Absolutely. you know, so um, if you would, uh, I, I would love for you to, uh, you know how to get in touch with me? Uh, is this the correct number, 703-752-6120? And you can, you can call that back in, in about 10, 15 minutes, and we're going to make arrangements to bring you in. So you and your sister, and we might have to bring Mr. Hughes back in here with you. <laughs> I don't have a problem. I agree totally. I, yeah. I agree 100%. Okay. Yeah. So make sure you call back and get the information so we can set that up. All righty. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. And, and you know, Bye -bye. let me say this. Let, and let me, I have to say this because she just hit it on the head. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got these six Caucasian ladies speaking about black history. Mm -hmm. Remember, when black history classes first started in school, mm -hmm. white people taught it. 
Right, but that... No, and there was a reason behind that. They only wanted you to know what they, they wanted, wanted you, you to know. know. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay? <laughs> That's true. So, like you said, the less I speak about you, the less you believe about yourself. Mm -hmm. Just like the black doll and the white doll thing, the, the experiment they have, uh, the colored kids had to choose which doll they wanted to be the white doll because they never heard anything good about the black doll. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. I want to be better. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know? So, it, 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 goes, it goes to say that the dumber I keep you, the better off I am. Well, you know, and, they, and, they, and see that when we mentioned Mudtown earlier, see that's what they thought by when they literally gave that to black people, because of the fact of it is the land had water, it was dealing with water and everything. It was but, a swamp back up there. Yeah, and these these folks got together and filled the land in, made it solid, and built their homes on it. And I remember because Mr. Axons, I remember if, when if Mr. you remember, Axons, I'm, I'm, when he and, moved and up I'm there. and I'm getting ready to speak on something I don't know too much about. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it was the Secret Thirteen or the Secret. Well, they they, it was, they had a group of uh, Fernand and them had a group up there. Yeah. Uh, okay, that had a plan. Courtney Brooks and, and all and, that. Right, and, <laughs> and and it has something. I'm not even going to speak on it because I know I'm going to say something wrong and everybody's going to jump all over the back of me. So <laughs> there was a plan uh -huh. up in Mudtown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before the schools were built up there, and it, it and they, it's a it was something with the school system, and, and I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to tell you there was a secret group up there that harnessed what was done with T.C. Williams. Hey, gentlemen, we are really out of time. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, we're going to get that phone call. We're going to have to. We got to have to do a part two to this. Hey, you got a whole month to do it. Hey, let's do it. <laughs> so, so let me tell you something. I mean, we going. I'm, I'm going. You know, I appreciate you know mm -hmm. y'all coming in. Mm -hmm. I thought about this, and I've been thinking about how we going to get the information out. How we going to talk about the truth be, be, before we leave? Let, I, I've got to say this. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, the citizens of Alexandria, uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. you have history right there in Charles Houston Recreation Center. Mm -hmm was put there last last year, mm -hmm. paid for by the National Basketball Association, Association. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was a gift from Ms. Shalita Lloyd. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's the statue of Earl Francis Lloyd, mm -hmm. the first Negro basketball player mm -hmm. to play in the mm -hmm. NBA. Yeah, I mean, the first uh, black bench head coach to win an NBA championship, mm -hmm. he drafted and or he found he drafted a uh, 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 a Dave Bing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're talking about history right out of Alexandria mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has not been broadcast. Nobody knows about it, and I'm telling you, if you take your kids up there to Charles Houston the Recreation, Recreation Center. Center. Come on. We, we, they, when they put the statue in there, they moved it to, they had it in the back. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it when, I saw oh, it when okay. it came in. Now, yeah. uh, now, myself and the Lord family, we went up to see it. Now, I want you to know that putting a black statue in the back of anything had That's connotations of slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, go to the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. We caught hell. Excuse my French. We caught hell getting it moved to the front of the building. Thank you. Thank you know, you. Thank in, in, in case you Thank all you. do not know, mm -hmm. Charles Houston Recreation Center was Parker Gray High School. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was the My original Parker, Parker Gray, Gray High School, school. Yeah. Yeah. until yeah. the new one with with, with with until the new one that was built in. I ain't gonna say it because I'm gonna be wrong, and because I, I I want to say in and what was it uh, uh, 56 or something. When they built a new one, I'm I'm not sure the I'm date. Not sure, so I'm don't not sure. you know? Like, hey hey hey, it ain't my heart as my mind. Oh okay, but go up there, take your kids up there to see the statue of Earl Francis Lloyd, mm -hmm. uh, for for real. If you this is this is a chance to see history. Mm -hmm. and, so 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 what we have to do again, and we talking about situations like this and investment 
We, we have to invest in each other. Mm -hmm. We have to invest in our history. We have to invest in our businesses. In, in order to invest, invest in your history, you got, you got to, to know, know your history. Okay, wait a minute. Follow me while I'm getting ready to go now. Mm -hmm. That's what people to people is here for. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose mm -hmm. well, for, that's, for that's, us to get information out, mm -hmm. to be able to talk about these things. Right. Well, see, that's the great thing, just like y'all both was, um, was in agreement of, that you got a whole month to let people know about certain things that they um, wasn't sure of or didn't know that existed. You know, so th this is the grand part about it because a lot of times we never had a platform to, to talk, even, talk about to it. To even talk about well, okay, it. Okay, that's my, that, because we got to go. We yeah. out of time. But listen what I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. I am so I can't wait to get that young lady in here. You understand what I'm yeah. telling you? Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We're gonna come back. The next time you come in here, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have room for us to help out because we can switch the studio up. Mm -hmm. And um, we're working on that. So we can get five, six people over there. So mm -hmm. if, if 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 you you wanna we already know she said that she gonna come mm -hmm. and, and she'll bring her sister. Yeah. So if we get back in here, we're gonna powwow and get everybody to come in and join in mm -hmm. on the conversation. We're going to get some phone calls. We're going to advertise. Y'all can already let them know, yo, we get ready to make some noise. Mm -hmm. We're Black History Month on People to People, the podcast for the people. I thank you. First of all, I really thank y'all for coming in at a oh, short yeah. notice. Oh, yeah. um, we were supposed to have on the program today, we were supposed to have our uh, life coaches mm -hmm. to relationship coach that they uh, talk on, let's talk about it Wednesday, mm -hmm. which, but at the same time, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get information out and make sure people use this platform to make sure that we grow. This is not an easy process for me. I, I'm saying this and I, you know, uh, uh, and you two gentlemen, mm -hmm. you two gentlemen have worked with me as I started. Y'all seen where I was. Mm -hmm. Um, and where I came yeah. from, y'all yeah. see and know where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you, I, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna thank you publicly because first of all, uh, uh, I I gotta thank you first because you I think you was you was my guest way ahead of time. We had conversation. Mm -hmm. You came in. You helped me get mm -hmm. equipment. You helped me get ideas. You helped me uh, even with the theme song for the for the, for the platform. Mm -hmm. That was him. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. well, I, I mean, I'm, it's me and him. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Right? And, and so I, I'd say thank you, and then for your encouragement mm -hmm. to say keep going and keep pushing. Oh, yeah. Mr. Hughes, let me tell you something, sir. <laughs> when you talk about we started something, you encouraged us. You gave us, we ended up here through the process of coming to you, where you was helping us. When you gave us an opportunity to even look beyond where we were, I'm telling you, thank you mm -hmm. for I, every time I've called you, you picked up the phone. Every time I asked you to come in, you have accommodated me. Mm -hmm. You have encouraged me even when you heard it in my voice one time on the phone. You told me, you heard that struggle with me. Yeah. yeah. And, and you you told me, you keep on doing what you're doing, and you encourage me. I want to tell you, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what I'm doing with the young lady right here that's mm -hmm. in here, and I'm trying to do it with many other people. You got some young kids out there that's interested in trying to get into the podcast and learn about production and stuff of this, this nature. Y'all get in touch with us because it's an opportunity for them to come in here. Mm -hmm. Also, we got so many different people can give them information. I thank y'all. I send peace and blessings to you. I thank Mr. Hughes, mm -hmm. Mr. Harold Hughes, and Mr. William Pinky Slade. I appreciate y'all for y'all coming in. Oh, y'all yeah. gonna have to tune in because guess what? Um, I'm checking my I'm checking my 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 uh, schedule. Let me tell you something. If it ain't nobody booked for Monday, guess what? <laughs> we back in here talking Black History again. <laughs> Not a problem. Nothing but the truth. Remember, ninety six years. Hey, wasn't built overnight. That's right. God bless, Thanks. and y'all have a good evening. All right. Nice show, nice show, nice show. Yeah. <laughs>